Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ryan SEO Show, and we have quite a few things to talk about. It is quite excessively hot over here in uh, Europe, so I might talk strange things, but that's only due to the heat. Don't worry about that. Um, we have a few things that happened recently um, that we really should look at. I, I guess the most important thing to talk about would be the uh, recent changes to certain systems, as they call it. Um, let's quickly bring up the um, release notes of today's patch. So they have listed a couple of abilities and they hope that will fix or resolve the um, lag issue to a certain degree. So everyone has high hopes and I'll definitely try that out later. Um, but it seems so far from when we did the test that the lag is actually sort of getting better. Um, so we all have high hopes that the situation might uh, take a turn now. We had lag for long enough, so uh, that's definitely good news. Um, additionally, we had the change to plasma consoles. Uh, what that refers to is if you look at your ship, you have the embassy consoles, which have a plasma proc. This one, uh, this one's damage was reduced to 75% of the original value, so decreased by 25. But it also currently does not crit with any sort of weapons type attack, whatever. Uh, so currently they aren't that great anymore but they intend to bring the critical chance back. So um, yeah, I, I'd probably not change much right now just to be aware of where some DPS might have went if you uh, didn't really investigate that. Um, by the way, good evening to everyone in the stream. Um, if you do have any questions, just let me know. I'll try to address that as quickly as possible. In additional news, we have um, a few th ships that are new that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, is there anything new on today's patch that we really should talk about? Um, I guess the most interesting one is the change to um, the intelligence fleet which no longer stacks between players and you cannot use the way they made it so it doesn't stack anymore is if you have the buff on you, you cannot use it. So basically one player uses it, everyone gets it, and once it's over, another player can use it. Um, that means that you now can more properly cycle the abilities one after another, basically, even in a team environment. It's sort of important though uh, that tactical fleet still doesn't work like this. So you have to make sure that you use your tactical fleet along with your intelligence fleet and that way you don't get any overlaps between different players. Um, usually, uh, but we'll talk about that in a minute with ISA. Um, is there anything else? They changed uh, how go down fighting works. It no longer gets a damage resistance stack for uh, outgoing attacks but now has a uh, uh, static 20 which is just better so that's fine um, not much of a real change so in recent news what we also should know about is in R&D in all your R&D schools they added an item uh, which is a battery so I'll just quickly make these go away um, which is the uh, consumable battery you have one in e uh, each and every school that is above level 10, I think. It says here requires level 10. And these batteries are quite good, to be honest. They give you like 20% all damage. Um, I think this is for exotic da uh, abilities. If you g use the beams one, um, show all the battery here, gives you plus 20% all damage. This one is like an slightly better than the attack pattern Omega, which only gives you 15. It's not a total damage at the end, but it's like attack pattern Alpha, uh, GDF, attack fleet and all those good abilities. Still makes batteries a whole lot more interesting because I know that 
like people weren't really using batteries because there weren't any really great ones except for uh, the red matter capacitor. This, uh, the Canon one, for example, gives you 50 accuracy. It's pretty much all good stats. Which ones are really good are, um, are the Beams one, obviously, with 20% damage. And if you have played that episode where you got the reactive catalyst thing, which heals your ship, that I can show you in a second. Um, that one is also really good if you can craft that. That's on my Romulan somewhere, this one. So that means you should spec more into batteries to increase their duration. The base duration should only be 10 seconds, while it has this warp core uh, I image, but it's actually the healing thing that we are looking for. This one gives you hit points over time and temporary hit points. Now we are on ground, so our skills don't affect this, right? If you look at it, it says over 10 seconds. However, if we beam into space, you will see that the battery skill actually increases the duration, but not the HPS. So you just basically double the healing of this or um, you double the benefit of the damage buff for it. And the lockout between different batteries has been reduced. So if you look at the uh, catalyst now, it says 18,000 healing over 19.9 .9 seconds. So it's really pretty good to spec into batteries now. I also have the energy amplifier for 20% all damage. If I use this one, the other one goes into a 30 second cooldown. So I can just use them alternatingly. That's really cool. Additionally, I also have the red matter capacitor to use, which means we want to have the nine points in starship batteries and we probably will get a uh, free respec because due to something that happened with today's patch, almost all skills are invalid like all characters have an invalid skill tree. So if you respec, just make sure you pick up those nine points in Starship Batteries. It's a very good time to do this. Um, so that's the battery change that we had. They are also crafted, if you look at them, with only the green and white items. And thus far, there hasn't really been much use for the green stuff. So this really makes up uh, a good solution for the overflow of those items. Your shirt isn't blue enough. That is true. Nothing I can do about that right now though. It's too hot to really wear that sort of shirts. Okay, then we had the um, heavy escort carrier bundle, the revamp of the Akira class. The ship itself didn't really change too much. We basically exchanged the Ensign Tactical for the Lieutenant Universal and we made the Lieutenant Commander Engineer a Lieutenant Commander Engineer slash Pilot. The Starship's trait makes your pets use certain abilities, but that is not too interesting, I'd say. So I, I'll just, I just got it to basically replace my old tier 5 fleet one because it's just better, you know, you get more abilities. Um, but I'm not, yeah, I, I'm not using the trade and stuff. I just got the fleet version just because I don't really need it. Um, and what I did with the stations is I used the Lieutenant Universal as an engineer to get the Emergency Power Weapons 2, Emergency Power Shields 1 with the two DOS to get the cooldown down. Uh, in engineering team to help me out with a little survival multi. This is basically the additional ability that I got. And um, then I also have the Fly Her Part 1, which makes your ship lose HP the longer it lasts, like you use it, it increases your speed and it takes down your hull. But this can give you pretty good uh, GDFs. That's why I'm using this. And the form up one, you select an ally, you use the ability and you and your target's damage will get increased over a certain amount of time. As you can see on this tooltip, it stacks from 5 to 20% based on the duration that it already is uh, on. So, like, I think it lasts for 20 seconds, and at second 1 it is 5%, at second 20 it's 20%, and it just scales from one end to the other. Um, pretty much the standard for hazard emitters and tractor wing pulsers, and tactical team Fire at Will, Fire at Will, Omega, Beta, and Chemocide with reciprocity. 
Um, you don't really have to do it. You could also make this work with another tag team or yeah, you don't really need it, but I, I sort of like it. So um, it's not too big of a change with this ship, but um, it's definitely an improvement over the old one and it looks really awesome. <laughs> Okay, because they uh, revamped the entire model apparently and all the textures and stuff. So I really like how it looks now. Okay, then additionally, we currently have the crystalline event going on. Don't know if you guys saw that yet. Uh, if you hit U reputation events, there you can now slot the um, crystalline event. You have to play the crystalline 14 times basically once a day. I think it's on a 20 hour cooldown. Um, the good thing about this is on the event, uh, during the event time, you get uh, all the marks that are possible from this. So if you didn't pick up enough Iconian marks because the troop transports are not leaving enough or something, uh, then you can definitely pick up those Iconian marks now for your three or even four piece, which I currently recommend basically everyone to get. The Iconian set is really awesome offensively, so yeah. Um, what do we get for this? It is a kit module. I'm currently scaled to level 50 because I'm in the staging area. Um, the kit module is a device that you put down, basically. It stays there for... I don't know if it actually says for how long it will stay last, up to 8 seconds. Okay, there it says. Uh, it taunts all enemies, so it makes the enemies attack the device. It absorbs incoming energy and environmental damage. And then it deals AoE damage when it expires. So basically, if this benefits from tactical initiative and you have four or five people using that, you probably don't get attacked anymore. That's that. So for ground, I think it's pretty good. Uh, should definitely get it, so... I'll just make sure to play that one in a second as well. Uh, you get the standard fleet marks, dilithium, multi-mark package. So that's that. Uh, we have a new featured episode that I want to play in a minute with you guys if you care to stick around for that. And then additionally, we also have a new promo ship. The Cranum Anorex Tier 6 Science Dreadnought. Um, the ship itself obviously looks awesome. Like, uh, it, it's one of the ships where I think, like, yeah, they can't really put that into the game, right? <laughs> but okay, here, here we are. Here it comes. Uh, it has pretty high hull at level 60. It has a awesome shield modifier of 1.45. Form 3 weapons. Lieutenant Commander Tactical Intel is sort of interesting. You can get override subsystem safeties. Anson Engineering, Commander Science, definitely a good thing. Lieutenant Universal Intel and one Lieutenant Commander Universal. So I would probably um, want to get one of two possibilities really. You can use this one with all, all tactical abilities like on the um, Akira class when you just put in uh, Omega into this slot. So you go attack team, fight will to Omega. The other guy then with um, Ori Beta. And it's, it's sort of difficult. You could then use Beta and Chemocide and just use Reciprocity if you're uh, certain you will get attacked enough. It's however sort of playing it. I personally feel more comfortable with having two fire at Wilts. So I would probably make the uh, Lieutenant Commander Universal another attack. As soon as I got the ship, I will tell you what I really did. Um, I don't have one yet. The Ensign Engineering and the Lieutenant Universal Intel uh, could then be Emergency Party Shields 1, Emergency Party Weapons 1, uh, Override Subsystems 2, if you use this one as the... Um, if you use both Lieutenant Commanders as pure tacticals. Uh, but at least you then have enough slots. Um, four tactical, two engineer, and five science. Definitely a good layout if you get the um, consoles for from the embassy sorted out. 
for now it's still pretty good. Uh, base turn 6 is pretty slow, but it has to have some downside I guess. You get a hangar bay, that's always something that I sort of like. You get special pets with it that read pretty good. Uh, sense analysis. Now this is sort of a big deal because you also get the secondary deflector slot which gives you the um, damage modifier on it. So your sense analysis increases your single target damage on a target if it's stacked up by 50% and that is quite a lot. It can have uh, console synergy with all the other temporal ships like the temporal science and the temporal destroyer. And the trait I have not yet tested out, but it reads sort of interesting. Though I'm not really sure what to ditch for it yet. There might be some use for it with the fifth starship trait. Um, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to trying this ship out though. Especially on Federation tunes, it looks really good. It's not really in a spot to compete with the Scimitar, but for Federation tunes, you know, you can't fly the Scimitar, so you take what you get. Okay. Uh, Ryan is talking about the game. That is true. Uh, one more thing for today. Um, we have already an announced downtime due to an emergency hotfix uh, related to the respec an issue because apparently right now you can't really respec. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll just see how that goes and if they want to screw us over. Okay, so in other news we have the cute emergency medical hologram. He is a new bridge officer that was implemented from the um, Las Vegas convention. They had uh, the codes there. It's a account unlock and we'll be giving away a code for one of the guys in possibly about a week. So just keep watching out for that if you guys don't have one yet. He is a science officer uh, with the superior photonic life form. Superior stubborn well, the other traits aren't really that special. But he also comes with skills like the photonic officer 3 that you can really only get on either this dude or the lobby store science officer. And therefore it is quite uh, yeah, rarely seen. If you want to get that, um, this is a very good way. And you can also customize him. You can uh, give him this beautiful scarf, which really looks awesome on him. I, I just find it extremely good that you can uh, put him into different uniforms. All right. So. Is there anything I need to read in the chat or is it just going crazy? I already have one with pink flowers, Cookie. Don't worry about that. <laughs> All right. So, um, I probably should just um, do the one CCA now. Um, the CCA event map is a little different compared to the regular one. It's not too different though. So we'll just join the uh, advanced queue here. It's quite a lot of people uh, playing so realistically it shouldn't be a problem to get these ones started really fast. Let me type in color log one. Uh, there are um, I, I think that the event map is still a little different to the original. You have the um, different stages with uh, gravity vaults at the beginning, certain black hole things can happen and a semi semi sensor scramble something. Um, I mean realistically, it, oh god, it's, it's lagging just a little. Let's hope this will not stay on for a while. Okay, so I'll we'll just use our stuff and shoot things. So, okay, I'm not, I'm not quite sure if this is my FPS or if it's actually the game. Some part is definitely the game, but when streaming, 
my CPU doesn't really like apparently what is going on here. So, uh, wow. Can I further reduce the graphic settings? So this is not a good thing, really. I'm trying to barrel, trying to escape with the escape key, but I cannot open the game options. Come on. Okay. We'll just close all these windows. We'll mute this one. I hope I had that one muted. Okay, so everything is already set to minimum. Realistically, we can't do much more than this. Uh, now we get the sensor scramble thing. Um, I, I don't really know what it does, just because we all we still see all the enemies. Um, but yeah, so we also have these uh, tholians as always, and the crystalline in the middle. Wow, this is seriously not playable. The problem is I can't even type in um, show FPS one because somehow they broke the um, thing that shows you the digits. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. I guess I shouldn't really do this. If we if we don't see any enemies, it, it should be fine, right? So we'll just look down like that. Get struck by that AOE thing it does at 33. Okay. Using our stuff and enjoying the show off the lag. It at least gives us some tr uh, time to appreciate how uh, awesome the new model of the Akira class looks. Uh, realistically, I think they did a really good job with this one. Uh, I mean, I I'm personally a fan of this ship and I think this one looks amazing, especially with the warp nacelles and the uh, lower saucer section is really well done with the uh, staff and signal and stuff. I don't know. It, it just looks way better than before. Um, okay, so as I said before, you can now choose all the marks that are in the game currently. Uh, you also get the daily bonus, so um, like completing any one of those gives me now 130 Iconian marks, which is, I think, pretty good. Uh, it also awards us with the Crystal Shard. We need 14 of those, so um, yeah, do that grind. The device is awesome. Or it's, it's not a device, it's a kit module. I should really uh, not mix those two up. A kit module is the thing that goes into your kit frame. The device is the thing below here. But I could definitely see um, where we would use the new thing. So I already have eight from last year, so this is pretty cool. Okay, so then. Uh, on to topic number two. We just joined the random queue. The random queue and the private matches have a difference. If you do the random queue and you leave, you get the leaver's penalty. If you create a private queue, uh, pick whatever you want there and create the game, put a name, put a password, stuff like that. And we have someone seeking us out at Cubala. Good evening. Thanks for tuning in, I guess. Um, then you get into this private fleet action. The private fleet action is a little different because when you leave you don't get a leaver's penalty. And you get this uh, pre-match chat basically where you can communicate with your teammates. So I would go to DPS Bronze or Silver or like one of the channels and say yeah, I'm looking for four more ISA at this point, right? Then I would invite them by right clicking their name and uh, hitting the invite to challenge match button. That usually works if people are not on cooldown. Okay, so that's great. Then we got the people. You s then say, um, yeah, ISA Phil, thank you, that stuff. And then you can use this party chat to talk about things that should be talked about. Uh, wait for pets is a good thing. Um, when to use Intel and Tactical Fleet. Like people calling now Tactical Fleet 1, Intel Fleet 1, the next guy saying uh, Tactical Fleet 2, Science Fleet 2, or uh, Intel Fleet 2, I mean. So then you use actually uh, your fleets one after the other. You don't just randomly throw them all out. 
and the devs are actually helping us with the timing now because the ability gets grayed out and I shouldn't have that in the middle of the screen. Um, yeah, the, he is asking if I do have the emergency command hologram in my company and this one is my bridge of the officer there. Yeah. Um, so the uh, intel fleet now gets grayed out when another player has already used it for the 30 second duration. So when it stops being gray on your screen and you're the person that is supposed to do it next, you just use it when it's uh, available then. So you can't really screw it up anymore. So really you should just talk about it like, I'll do the first fleet, I'll do the second fleet. Is such a drastic help to everyone's game experience. It's like 30% more damage uh, for everyone. And it's also um, a reduce in damage resistance for the enemies due to intel fleet. So really try to help out each other. That is key to this game. Okay, we have some, um, what's the thing's name? Oh god, and it has the pink flowers. That is beautiful. I love it, Cookie. Okay, so when you then have done all that, also, one more thing. When someone in chat types, like looking for four more ISA, and someone answers with Toon, T O O N, he wants to tell you that he is relogging to another Toon and will join you in a second, usually. Okay? So try not to ignore people, be re reasonable with them. The instance leader is basically the guy that is supposed to write stuff like go in five seconds. Um, so if you wait for pets and you realistically always should, um, then wait until everyone type ready and then the instance leader, the guy that hosted the room, will type something like um, decloak and go in five or go in three. And then at that point, everyone can get a good clean start of the match. Okay, now on to another thing that is basically always asked. If you have a tactical tune, you get the um, go down fighting. Go down fighting requires your ship to be below 50% HP to be used, but it scales up and damage the less HP you have at like 0% with 1 HP, you would be in the upper best shape basically that your GDF could be. You might also just die within a second. Um, however, um, people always ask like how do you get the GDF and there's a lot of strange ways to get it, usually in Wolf's Q taken damage, like that's the basic principle. But uh, to really do it over and over, you need to find a way that works very well for you. Usually what I do and what everyone does these days is the first um, tactical, no, it's not a tactical cube, the first ball cube in ISA, for example, deals 105,000 kinetic damage. Kinetic damage gets reduced by shields by 75%. So basically, when you look at 105,000 damage, and I need to look around that one thing over there, notepad. Okay, so uh, this is obviously not always the same, but it's like the average. It might deal a little less every now and then, it might deal a little more every now and then. So it's 105,000 damage that you take. You then take your shields times four. That, that is uh, the because the shields only take 25% of the damage. So um, the ship is damaged, okay. We'll just go quickly into space. Sorry folks, I'll be back in a minute. Just need to uh, share how this works. So let's load the system. Okay, so we have 8,782 shields. So I'll we'll type that out, 8,782. Get the calculator, 8782 times 4. And this is the wrong mouse. I'll take this one. So this is 35128. So we will take the 105000 minus 35128. And that leaves us with a uh, with this amount of damage that we will still take. So if we 
fly directly into the warp core breach, it will kill us. Because, will it actually kill us? No, oh god, it's getting pretty close. Okay, so we have a little less HP, but we also have kinetic resistance. This is now the base damage that we would take. The base damage is before our resistance. Our resistance to kinetic damage is 25.5. Um, which mostly comes from the engines or deflector from the deflector which gives us 20 damage resistance rating uh, along with the skill armor reinforcements which also gives us damage resistance rating the total amount of rating that we have gives us this kinetic resistance in percent so we take this number and divide it by 1.255 and that is the final damage that we will take Okay, so if we fly directly into the warp core breach without using any additional defenses, and this is sort of important, because if you use like brace for impact, see what happens, like your kinetic resistance just goes through the roof, or using mercy powder shields, or using hazard emitters, or using, you know, all this uh, stuff, certain procs can also screw you over, uh, automated reinforcements gives you resistance on a facing, uh, like stuff like that that can change this result but right now we will be left with 14,000 HP just about so that's a pretty good GDF right um, and then we basically can do this all the time there's nothing too special involved the only problem is if we take damage before we take the breach and this now gets into uh, sort of like experience and feeling like the farther you are out of the cubes explosion the less damage you take also using defensive abilities will just reduce the damage that you take. So if you have been shot at by the spheres, your shields are drained, it might be a good thing to just use Brace for Impact. Okay, so practice on getting those GDFs if you are a tactical captain. GDF is really awesome, it increases your damage by 100% for one minute. 100% in this case means 100% of the uh, overall modifiers like Alpha, fleet and stuff so it's not really 100% but it's still like two alphas for twice the duration so it's really really important um, okay so I'm getting distracted by the chat again sorry for all the guys in the recording um, okay, so we probably, have we talked about everything? Um, it is standard practice that if you type in wait for pets, all five people agree, you then go into the match and someone just flies in to just uh, type to the chat like, um, yeah guys, let's do this again, you don't get a leaders penalty on private matches, everyone just warps, you recreate the room and everything is fine, it's no big drama. Um, just try to get everyone into a position where they can do a good run. There are certain issues with pets not docking, with pets being aggressive and stuff, that can make that happen, but it's really not a big problem, just due to the fact that you can just reform uh, over and over if you just want to. So, okay. Do we have something else? We have the GDF, we have the private queue. Um, okay, so then one more thing that I wanna show you guys. It is called the Combat Log Reader. And I'm not, God, sliding too much. Okay, so this is Combat Log Reader and I wanna uh, address a few questions that I always get. Um, let's jump into this log. So. I have this number here which is the base DPS it's in this um, orange thing how do you make that appear um, that's in the advanced settings and on the upper right you have overview and damage and heal and you just go to the damage section base damage check this one and in the overview also check the base if you then press OK you have the base values here Base value of DPS means the damage that you will deal without any debuffs on your target like attack pattern beta, delta, fire mark, sensor scan and like stuff like that. 
okay? Uh, in good runs, you can about double it. In really good runs, you can get a little above this. Um, as you can see here, we are at a really good quota. That is due to the uh, plasma explosions dealing really uh, good damage in comparison to their base. But like if you look at the anacrodon beam arrays, um, you can see that it's about doubled. Okay, then um, additionally, comet log reader basically just reads the comet log, so the log is provided by the game. Just so people understand that this is not interacting with the game itself. It just reads, reads what the game uh, gives it. Then we have on the left basically the selection and on the right basically the uh, yeah, um, like the display of things. So if I want to check out what a certain weapon of mine dealt, I uh, select my unit on the left, attack abilities and a prone array or fight will or whatever uh, I'm looking for. And you also have the pets, you have the healing. So that way um, you can find a lot of stuff. Also at the top you have the uh, show NPCs, which makes all the NPCs appear on the left. And there are interesting things on this, like the resistance, damage, and DPS. Resistance is probably the most uh, important one to look at. This one is the Nether Transformers Resistance Monitor. After the unit dies, it doesn't uh, change anymore. So it just uh, makes this green line. Um, but basically the lifetime was from this point to this point until it was dead, okay? Um, if you deal 100 damage onto a unit that is not debuffed and has a zero in this, you will deal 100 damage. If it's at minus 100, you will deal 100 plus 100, so 200 in total, and if it's uh, at minus 200, you will deal 300 damage. So that is a cool thing, I guess. Uh, how potent resistance debuffs are. However, there's some diminishing return on that, and if you are looking, or if you want to look more into detail onto that, I'd have to redirect you to a previous uh, show where I really showed like how the damage resistance basically scales. Um, I don't know which one was at this point, but you can just look that up on the YouTube. All right. Okay, do we have something else that we really should look at? By the way, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Um, can't wait for the winter event. <laughs> and it's sort of soon. Um, okay. I think that settles most of it. Also, there's a discussion going on about damage versus critical damage. Critical damage applies to the same category as attack pattern alpha, um, fleet and stuff. If you mouse over critical severity, this is actually stated in the tooltip. The critical severity value is added to the normal attack damage and it's not multiplied or something so basically when you have attack on alpha you deal instead of 100 150 percent and if you then crit you deal um, 150 plus uh, 61 so like 210 it does not multiply with each other it just adds up however the quantity that you get of crit severity as well as uh, being a it being half a damage modifier leads me to still be going for the crit d3 pen weapons now from my critical chances point of view i calculated it to be around three and a half percent better than uh damage like damage times three pen however it's probably sort of close so it doesn't really matter on what you go for okay So someone's asking why his skills are invalid. Uh, today's patch. I don't know what really to reply to that. Um, okay, so I think we caught up on all the interesting changes. There's a new console available today. 
Um, so I'll just play the featured episode and for this I will use my beautiful Delta tune that is uh, because the missions actually scale down to level 10 if you are um, still uh, in the time of the featured episode so if you have a low level tune that's I think a pretty good usage you will obviously still have um, like other missions God. someone is asking me if that is a bug uh, I wish people would just watch the stream <laughs> I'll just quickly answer this guy Okay, so um, as you might need the consoles, which also drop at the uh, appropriate level, appropriate level of the tune that you play on, you might need to play this on your level sixes as well uh, to get the high level version. Um, just to look at the story of it, um, I personally just also like to play it with the low levels. Okay, so it's called the butterfly featured episode. The research teams in the Kiana system have been running thousands of temporal incursions simultaneously simulations of how to use the Krenum weapon. We need an official with field experience to evaluate the most promising options and their feasibility. Check back each week as new rewards are unlocked for this featured episode. Okay, I probably need my headset to actually hear something on this one. Usually we do get pretty cool mouse uh, voiceovers. So the war continues and all of our warriors are needed to fight. We need to increase the volume. Uh, quiet the mission. Audio. Is it voice? It might be voice. I don't want the FX too loud though, so. Video. <laughs> Interface. Okay, let's just try this. See what happens. Um, so, EPS power transfer or red messenger. When's the best time to use it? Mm, most stuff, like the major cooldowns, I usually use. And I mean, this is talking about ISA, right? Uh, major stuff I usually use when I get to the side of the map, like the one side with the transformer or the other, because then you actually have enough enemies in range to make it count. If you just use it on the first cube, everything dies within a second and then you basically don't have anything to shoot at and just goes to waste. Um, so when you get to the side, uh, I'd use it there. So you should get married in game. Okay, what is going on? Do you think the way the devs are handling stuff means that the game is in a decline? Not necessarily, because we get currently a pretty good feedback on the lag thing. So, um, at least I have hope that it's it will get better now. We can't hear anything. Anything at all? You should hear something. vegan butterfly it was really really silent so there might be an issue also how do you guys like the quality of the stream I have reduced um, the resolution a little and we see the new ship we have been working with the Krenum to build both this facility and a weapon similar to the one developed by Anorax in the 22nd century Captain Nog is running point for the Alliance 
but teams from all across the Alpha and Beta involved with the research. Oh. It's fascinating work, but there's a lot to do yet. How can I help? Nog might be able to explain more. He's waiting for you. Okay. Can you check out my build if you give me the uh, STO Academy link? I definitely can look at it. Uh, the problem is if I'm tapped out of the game, as in clicking on my second monitor, it somehow mutes the audio. Um, yeah. I wish I was seeing you under better circumstances. We've managed to make a prototype of the Krenum weapon in Anorax's records, and we have not attempted to use it yet. Time isn't something you mess around with. So we have been conducting simulations here of possible incursions, as well as developing new ways to protect and store data on various timelines. Actually, Jay, that's the part that I forgot about. Thank you for pointing that out. I showed the Krenim ship earlier, and it is coming off the Duty Officer Delta Alliance pack. And this one is currently for sale. It also, however, has these new duty officers, the energy weapons officer with a chance to give you a, a critical severity buff and a critical chance buff. It is 4% for the purple ones. Those are really pricey right now, uh, but these duty officers are really good. They stack up, I think, three times, so you get a maximum of 3% crit H and 30% crit D, critical damage. Uh, so these two are really good. You currently also have the chance for the uh, ship and you get certain traits out of this. You get the attack on Delta Prime, point defense protocols and the scramble fighters. The only one I'm personally really looking for is the attack pattern Delta Prime right now. That uh, upgrades your attack pattern Delta. So you also get critical severity and critical chance when using um, attack pattern Delta. But it also does that on other targets. So if you're like a healer of some sort and uh, use it on another player, he will actually benefit from your trait and get crit age and critical severity. So this is really cool. Um, the pointy fans and the scrum fighters, I don't really see them being worth it. They are, however, extremely rare and like 300 million last time I checked. So yeah. Um, the audio in-game is working now, that is good. Hey Geo, good evening, thanks for tuning in. Lag aside, I more refer to how often they missell or create bo broken things that people invest for, m invest for months in. I've really felt angry about the f fired will nerf personally. Uh, I think you're talking about the plasma console uh, thing, right? Um, yeah, I don't really like the visuals of the headset, but I need to hear something at the same time, so that's how that works. Um, the plasma consoles will return, so at least that is what they said. Uh, I trust them so far in this, um, because they sh probably know that a lot of people bought that. So I have hope. <laughs> I don't know, like we have seen a lot of things that were a little strange lately. However, um, they also addressed like all of them. So they might do a little better on the Q and A uh, QA side, but realistically it, it's working for now. I personally would love a new STF that is not too bad time gated like ISA 2.0, whatever that might be, but that is something else. Okay, so uh, go get the studio officers if you can. Um, critical severity. I only use one of each. They get a 4% chance at purple and they stack up three times within 15 seconds with uh, fight will go. Um, it, it seems to work out for me. So uh, you also get a version for ground. These I have on my ground tune up, of course. Uh, the others aren't really looking that amazing, but they also get the R&D school stuff and uh, they are 
pretty much all of them do have something to look into. The only thing that I sort of think is a little strange is the projectile weapons officer giving you uh, severity and chance because they um, you can only have three projectile weapons officers but you basically need three cooldown reduction projectile weapons officers if you're uh, running a torpedo build so uh, they can't really benefit from this too well but that's how it is okay <laughs> yeah you just have to relax and know that it's I mean realistically we don't have any problems with ISA or even HSE so even though we have been nerfed with that console it doesn't really matter too much and I think they will fix it like yeah I think they are capable of making that thing work Okay, so do you have any ideas on when to make a temporal incursion? We've tried a different number of scenarios, but only in the holodeck. Direct action against the Iconians is proving to be problematic, because so much time has passed since they were first a great power. Incursions that far back in time must be carefully planned, or the fallout of even minor changes can ripple across reality. We have, however, seen some problems in trying to delay arrival okay actually it would be closer to a 700 year delay if our calculations are correct the Iconians have had 200,000 years to build their fleets but we're catching up to them we've already seen what the 29th century technology can do imagine what we'll have in the 32nd century so we would be on more equal footing exactly the other potential solution is to cut into the current power base. What if the Iconians never allied with the Alachi or the Solanet? We wouldn't be facing the trouble we do now. What are your best scenarios? The most promising incursions each follow one of these tactics. My teams have been running simulations and refining their targets, but I'd like you to assist them using a special quantum recursive algorithm. Our simulators can run the outcome of a possible incursion on the holodeck. Interacting with that simulation will give us more data than just crunching the numbers. We need to really interact with it to see what reality would look like. And for that, I need someone like you with field experience. Okay. And we'll do whatever helps us to win the war. Going over to the next Hello. guy. Please allow me to explain what we're doing here. We've determined that if we remove a specific series of stars from the Beta Quadrant in the distant past, a rogue planet will enter the Iconia system and cause massive geological damage at about the same time the planet was bombarded by the Iconian's enemies. The technological buildup of the orbital bombardment that destroyed the Iconian civilization will still happen, but the Iconians themselves will have to deal with a natural disaster, not a war. Is that even allowed? Like, that is pretty crazy. Maybe the survivors of a natural disaster, if there are any, won't be so vengeful. And none of the stars we will remove have planets with the possibility of developing life. The overall effect on the galaxy is minimal. It's a painful path, but it could <laughs> be the one that leads to peace. That is really strange. The number of stars we will have to remove is a concern, which is why we're trying this in a simulation first. But as Captain Nog said, these simulations aren't perfect, so we have devised a holodeck program that will expand and extrapolate on possible effects of the temporal incursion. Tell me this then, apart from ISA, HSA, etc, is there really anything they have created in the past two years that could really be considered endgame? Um, that's realistically my concern as well. Um, the idea was with the advanced and elite uh, difficulties to basically uh, get the old stuff 
to be challenging again. Um, but I think in the interview at the uh, Las Vegas convention, they acknowledged that the time gate is not really that awesome of an idea. So let's say I have hope that we might see something better coming up soon. Um, and the nerfs to ISA might have been a little premature, but like HP and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, right now, I only play ISA for damage, HSE, like you can easily play all the missions with friends and get the story content. I think you should just take it for what it is and not try to um, get more out of it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a difficult answer really. I just think that not taking it overly serious is probably helping. Let's put it that way. I don't know. So you're giving a lot of weight to the holodeck. It's the best option we have available to us. The holodeck's algorithms have been updated to change and adapt to the data created by the simulated timeline alteration. This is not your average hollow now. Once we okay. run the program, you'll be able to interact with our best approximation of the new timeline. Interaction with the holodeck components will allow the program to generate a more in-depth solution and give us a better idea of what to expect. We have set this simulation on a Federation starship patrolling the Sol system, and you are the captain. If all goes as planned, we expect that almost everything in the system should be close to current reality. All right, let's do that. Um, I mean, if, if you look at that, they, they are putting quite some effort into uh, like all the textures and stuff and the rooms. Um, I, I think they are trying and if you give them time, they will sort hopefully most stuff out. But yeah, let's run program alpha and see what happens. Why, why are they shooting each other over here? Captain, you're alive. We repelled the intruders on the bridge, but the ship has taken heavy damage, and a lot of the crew are injured. Sir, I'm not sure this is the time. So many people are hurt, and most of the systems are offline. The life support is on backups, and our resources are down to nothing, and... I'll help the wounded, but you need to help me. What happened? Dominion stopped firing at us when we lost weapons. Now they're focusing on Earth's defense grid, but it's only a matter of time before they return to finish us off. We'll stabilize the crew and fight back. This isn't over yet. Okay. Sir, I, I tried to fight them off. The boarding parties. The Jem'Hadar. We have to stop the Dominion. They can't take Earth too. The screenshot is at the wrong angle. We are standing in front of it. The chair. Okay. Don't worry, we'll stop them. We'll need to find a few others. We we can't stop them. Wow, he's the positive guy. Maybe if we hadn't been at war with the Romulans. Maybe if the Klingons hadn't ripped themselves apart. I'll I'll be fine, Captain. Just rattle. Okay, send him to sick bay. And let's see what his story is. I never expected they would get so far into our defenses. I'm sorry, Captain. I just need a moment. Then I'll be ready to fight. Okay, cool. So I place someone is still alive. Good evening, STO Havoc 117 MC. Thanks for joining. And good evening. Okay, answering the hail. USS Ajax, sensors show your ship is completely defenseless, and I would prefer not to delay our arrival at Earth to deal with such a minor annoyance. 
Surrender now, and I will guarantee the safety of your crew. We will never surrender. Okay, cool. So we access the ship's computer. Warning, hull breaches on deck 4, 5, and 6. Emergency force fields engaged. Hull integrity 22. Weapons offline, shields offline, life support. Emergency backups engaged. Um, okay, so we are in pretty bad shape, I guess. Everyone is dead. Vulcan is lost. Andoria is in flames. Romulus, Tala, Prime, Beta Z. Trill ashes. If the Romulans had joined us, maybe this would have been different. Okay, so even though there is no Iconian uh, activity, it seems that we also don't have much of a Federation left, so it might not be a good choice to do this. Um, we need to go this way. Leaving the holodeck, checking with, with the guy. And I think we can just tell them that we are good to go, right? Like that looked quite all right. Sorry, we were watching from the control room, and that could have gone better. Even with all that, the simulation data on whether the Iconians were entirely eliminated from that timeline is inconclusive. We were able to record your interactions, and we've been able to piece together what happened from those. From what we can piece together, the Klingon Empire was never unified by its conflicts against outsiders and the great houses turned on one another instead. The Romulans took the chaos as an opportunity to attack. The Federation stepped in to help the Klingons, and the war between the three factions basically ripped the Quadrant apart. The Dominion then conquered all three weakened powers. Do you think the developers in some near future will add buffs to cannon turret builds? Don't know, maybe some over-penetrating weaponry? Um, I have no idea what the devs will do, so I can't really tell you anything more than that. Um, My team will continue working on other possible incursion scenarios. Okay. Uh, I mean, currently, cannons would need some buffs, but it, it's really complex to really address stuff like that. So. I'm just shooting into the blue, just like everyone else there. Another one of you voyagers. I don't know how you can help, but very well. My team is working on scenarios that reduce the Iconian power base. We're attempting to do so by fixing the mistake that Janeway allowed to happen decades ago. We're going to stop the bomb from being discovered. We plan to do this by preventing Voyager from ever coming into contact with underspace. This will prevent them from finding Vatwa Prime, and Seven of Nine will never wake the Vatwa. Oh god, he's, he's another positive. He really likes the Voyager people. Okay. survive if we don't try to repair the damage you've already done. The goal is to cause a solar flare that will force Voyager to divert from the course it was on when it stumbled into underspace. If it safely passes without entering underspace, it can continue on its trip home and bypass the Vatwar entirely. Let's just say I knew, Gio. It, it, it's going to be alright though. Simulation is set for the USS Voyager which is fitting since they caused the problem in the first place. Our projections show that even if the Vaudoir never return, your people will still find a reason to stick your noses into our business. So we're attempting to see how the elimination of the Vaudoir will change the formation of the Delta Alliance. You will be a member of the diplomatic team. Okay, let's run that program. Do I need to go back to him? Don't mind, no. Oh. I think okay. he partially blames people from your quadrant for some of the Krennin's troubles. After all, if Voyager hadn't restored the Vodvor, they would have never been in a position to ally with the Iconians. But there is no reason to dwell on past hurts. 
We're trying to fix what we can here, and then learn to accept the rest. Noi funnels that passion to help his people into his work. Perhaps it will change everything. It is a pleasure to meet you. Both Captain Nog and Seven speak highly of you. Okay. So that should be that. We'll go to the holodeck, probably uh, seeing the Intrepid interior now. There we go. And we have all the nice people. Zari, Bentham, Malon, and a Talaxian. This is an absolute disaster. I had thought that Admiral Tuvok was being pessimistic about the chance for success here. But now, I think he was right. No, it's not. The hierarchy started setting these people against one another before Admiral Tuvok and his team could start to pull them together. The very fact that they all agreed to be in the same room is a minor miracle. Do you think you can bring them together? Between Vulcan logic, Klingon tenacity, and Romulan pragmatism, we'll convince everyone here that the threat is real and an alliance is in their best interest. But it won't be easy. Now, if you'll excuse me, I see I have another argument to break up. Good luck. Now we probably have to talk to all of them, huh? We've always tried to be good neighbors and treat other races with respect. But this is really too much. The Malon are using our system as a dump, and their trash isn't our problem. Okay. The Malon might not be the biggest threat, but they are the most immediate. Wait until they start dumping their trash in your front yard and see how you like it. <laughs> I cannot understand the problem. Are you here to preach about responsible waste management, too? You can save it. I have a commitment to my people and my planet that supersedes any other concerns. Okay. We don't need outsiders telling us what to do. If the Talaxians want to talk, they can come to us directly. Aren't they talking? I, I thought they were. I, I might be mistaken. Okay, use the call to conduct research. The Malon have resisted attempts to accept less hazardous waste management practices and continue dumping waste throughout the, the quadrant. The most at-risk population are the Talaxians, who have a new colony close to Malon dumping grounds. The Malon have moved into Talaxian space to avoid hierarchy attacks. Diplomatic relations between the Malon and the Talaxian are rapidly deteriorating. The Malon have accu accused uh, the Talaxians of working with the hierarchy, a charge that the Talaxians strenuously deny. The Benthans could potentially pressure the Malon to return to the negotiation table. Okay, so we'll just make the Benthan talk to him. Yes, what is your question? I am rather busy. The Hazari are stepping up their smuggling operations, and the hierarchy's new drive for profits has created a significant increase in attacks on unaligned transports. Good luck with that. The Hazari aren't interested in anything but making deals. This whole meeting is just a waste of time. Unity might work where you come from, but I don't have any reason to cooperate with criminals like the Hazari or thugs like the Hierarchy. Okay. What do you want? Did the Benthans make you one of their little deputies? Before everyone broke ties with the Hierarchy, they told us what people say about us. Mercenaries, honorless, ha! They all deny it, but we know. Now we look out for ourselves. Yeah, I see why our diplomatic eye has promised. I'll be here if you want to talk business. Okay. Unraveling this mess could take months, years. Well, lucky us that he is the right man for the job and not we. <laughs> I 
I'm loading data. And we end the program. And our sensor has scrambled. Not anymore. Probably to hide the uh, transition, basically. Interesting. Damn. That was useless. The Iconians were so determined to have a hold here that they simply found another species to fit the bill. Maybe if you had been a better negotiator, you would have been able to unite those representatives against the hierarchy. Then at least we would have had a chance. This scenario isn't as catastrophic as trying to remove the Iconians, but it's not exactly ideal either. We'll have to try something else. Okay. You must excuse my husband's harsh humor. This has been a very trying time for the Kremlin. Thank you. We'll keep working. Trust my wife to be the voice of reason. Perhaps I was too hard on you. I... I just want to be able to fix all of this. We can't turn back time, but we can change it. Please, speak to Gamma Team. Captain Nog thinks very highly of their plan. Okay, so this one should be the last one. They only had three. We've been waiting for you. Our team is focusing on delaying tactics. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. What if? Iconia had never been discovered. In 2365, Captain Don Barley of the USS Yamato found a star chart on Denias 3 that revealed the location of Iconia. I want to redirect a meteor to impact the archaeological site on Denias 3 before Captain Barley begins his excavations. Iconia will remain a myth, and we will not attract the Iconian's attention as early as we did. True, but if you compare the changes in Iconian technology over the past 200,000 years with what the rest of us have done in the past two centuries, it's obvious that the Iconian culture has stagnated while we have advanced rapidly. Additionally, there are other factors in play that could trigger the alliances and sharing of technology that have come about because of the Iconian threat. It's a risk, but it's one that could pay off. The program is set for Romulan space. Because the Hobus supernova was caused by direct Iconian interference, we expect Romulus to be intact in this new reality. As such, the Romulan Star Empire should once again be a major power in the Quadrant. Your role will be as an officer on a Romulan warbird. Okay, so we can do that as well. Uh, we've been expecting you, Mr. Anderson. I don't know if you guys recall that quote, but I think that was one of the most impressive of all the movie. Speak with Commander Tamer. And he is where exactly? Uh, he might be this guy. Okay. Ah, Sub Commander. I'd like to test out some new security passcodes. If you'd be so kind as to seal the doors and disable certain uh, equipment, we need to talk. Okay. I think he wants to shoot us, doesn't he? He, he will probably shoot us. Disable the listening device, which is very well hidden under a console, which is a little too big. Okay. Thank you for playing along, something. The Tal Shiar can't hear us now. I need to talk to you about the time and the separatists. They've been located near the Daywa system. What we do next could change our future. Okay. Tal has been inspired by Spock's teaching. He and many others have left the homeworld and are gathered together in a flotilla somewhere near Tal Dewa. Natan and his allies have been making overtures of peace to both the Federation and the Klingons. Because of this, they have enough support that even the Tal Shiar won't take direct action against them. The Borg are at our borders. The Empire can't fight the Collective and the Separatists at the same time. Thank you for playing along, Subcommander. The Tal Shiar can't... The Tal has been inspired. Thank you for playing hmm. along, Subcommander. Okay. If I was, I wouldn't have needed you to lock the door. I intend to put Lieutenant Salon in the brig, 
and then take this ship and crew to join the Separatists. Are you with me? Interesting. If we do this, we will be traitors to the Empire. I know. I have tried to work within the system, but the system is broken and corrupt. The Tyrant's <laughs> people are building something better. You and I both know it. The crew knows it. We will take this warbird to the town, and we will finally be free. We have to do what is best for our people. All right. Cookie clearly did not mean to imply that everyone watching is no one. That must be a misunderstanding. Secret conversations between the commander and one of his senior officers. Mm, very, very suspicious. suspicious. Loyal citizens of the Romulan Star Empire have no need for locked doors. He could speak a little faster. So, I'm going to have to ask you to accompany the security team to the brig. Tamer, you are a fool. And you will be the death of everyone on this ship. Datan and his people are terrorists. If you join, you will share them. Okay. <laughs> My friends. It is time we forge our own destiny. A destiny free from the tyranny of the Tal Shiar. If we leave, we will have a better, brighter future than what they would allow us. I know this is a step into the unknown, but it is a step we will take together. Throw off your chains. We will join our brothers and sisters in freedom. All right, inspirational speech, and now we blow up, I guess. Or is the simulation done? Speak with the con officer. No, ah, actually, this. Some of my family has left Romulus to join the time. I'll be proud to join them. As this is probably the plan that we want to do, nothing will explode, I guess. So we'll just plot the course for the Taldua Dua system thing. Gather the data. Uh, from this side of the console. Downloading that and ending the pro program. How many more stages do we have? So far, we basically only had the interaction. What is he talking about? Are you here to protect the timeline? Anything involving temporal mechanics is complicated. The short answer is yes. <laughs> I am watching these simulations very closely, as are my counterparts from the Republic and the Klingon Empire. Even small changes to time can have large and lasting effects. On Earth, we've called this the butterfly effect. The metaphorical example is of a butterfly flapping its wings and starting a chain of events that lead to a hurricane on the other side of the planet. All right. So, I mean, if, if he's watching over our shoulder, we should be safe, that right? promising simulation yet. It appears there was some merit to our hypothesis that the Iconians advanced their plans due to early contact. The readings do indicate higher levels of Borg activity, but it should be an acceptable risk. Higher levels of Borg activity? <laughs> do we see some infected space elite coming up there? The data in this simulation does show higher Borg activity than we're currently seeing, but there are no signs of Herald, Iconian, or Solonay presence at all. And while the Romulan Star Empire is restored to their former power, there is a democratic Romulan group opposing the Tal Shiar. And more importantly, Romulus is intact. This is the result many of our Romulan researchers have been trying to bring about. But this isn't our reality. We'll be significantly altering everything we know. The political calculus of the Quadrant will change, but the data supports what you saw on the holodeck. No Iconians. We have solid projections. The only suggestion I have now 
is that you consider it in conjunction with Captain Nog and the Republic representatives here. Like the guy in the episode, Anorex, like he always had solid projections as well. Didn't really work out for him, huh? I'll discuss it with them, but I'm not making any promises. I mean, changing everything, I don't know if that's a good thing. This last test has the most promising results I've seen, and saving the Romulan homebrew is an added bonus. We're not going to have a lot of shots at this. I've been looking at Anorex's work, and I think it's too easy to get into a temporal loop where you try again and again for a specific result, and time starts fighting back. I'm inclined to say this is our best chance. But this will have a huge impact on the reality we know, especially your people, Commander Jirak. I won't give my authorization without hearing from everyone. Yeah, make SCO small and your cam really big, please. Guys, calm down, it's gonna be alright. <laughs> Ryan, I'm trying not to pay attention to the mission, I'm just looking at your face. Wow. We'll, I, I think we'll leave it at that. It is what it is, right? We can't move forward without considering the effect on the Republic. This is difficult. It would change everything for us. We'd have our home back, but the Republic, everything we've built, it would all be gone. But there's still hope. Even in this other reality, Datan has led many Romulans away from Sela and her tall Shi'ar thugs. Did you get a haircut? Indeed I did. It, it happens every now and then. The impacts... This impacts the Republic most of all. The simulation specifically mentioned Datan and a separatist movement. Commander Tamer makes the choice to join Datan, the same choice he made after the homeworld was lost. With Romulus, we could have numbers. More people who have had enough of the Tal Shiar's oppression could join us. Maybe millions more. If Datan is able to get a movement going, even at the height of the Empire's power, I have to believe that change is possible. Okay. Make the incursion. The lives we save will be worth the work we'll have to do to reform the Republic. The Tal Shiar wasn't able to stop us the first time. They won't stop us again. Hmm. I mean, based on holodeck simulation, I probably would do it. If the Romulan Republic thinks it's worth the risk, then we should try it. So, we have been informed that the Lissat and the Kranim vessel will be traveling with us to the site of the temporal incursion. The Kranim vessel has the weapon on board, and the Lissat will provide additional security and manpower if needed. All three vessels will be temporarily, temporarily shielded to protect us from changes in the timeline. As long as that shielding holds, we will be able to observe the changes and even interact with them. But we will not be a part of the new timeline. Captain Ox says the temporal shield generators can be damaged. We'll need to be careful. We can beam you up to the Odin as soon as you are ready. Prepare for immediate departure. Isn't it facing the wrong way? Or was that a research lab thing? Did, didn't the ship just stay upright there? Um, aren't you like Samson though? Doesn't your DPS go down when it's that short? No. Okay. That was pretty fast. I didn't expect it to come already. Is that Romulus? Hey, it's, it's assimilated. assimilated. Awesome. Can we just erase it now? I think that's the safest course of action. Yes, I think we have a problem. No, we expected to see some Borg activity, but this can't be right. What happened? I agree that this is unexpected, Commander. But we knew there would be anomalies. We need more information. 
Let's find out where the simulation might have gone wrong. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's a little unexpected. Staying on the edge of the system, Jarok and I will move in for sensor sweeps. The last thing we need is the Borg assimilating the Kranim's weapon. The whole system can't be assimilated, can it? That is a lot of Borg. Um, if I turn up the graphics, it might be more. No life signs. Warships that are cloaking, okay. Great, the Bok have shields now. Uh, cloaks, shields up. Yeah, that, that's a new thing. <laughs> so we'll call quickly these guys okay I'm on my mark getting tractor beamed there might be a scaling issue with one of my allies I think they take a little strange damage like the the warbird with 150k might be a little stronger than suppose I really should stop tabbing out while he's talking. So this is that one. Um, pets. Ah, the damage seems, I think, fine. Hmm. Okay. I've modified some personal shield generators to shield you temporally as well. I'm transporting them over now. Hurry. The temporal shielding drains a lot of power. You won't have much time down there. Yeah, this is a strange word. Temporally is what he said. Is that even right, or is that the Ferengi way of saying it? The temporal shielding brings a lot of power. Okay, so we'll get the data. Not axing that one away. We have the temporal shields for the away team, sir. And Claude says she's concerned about the weapon. We probably only have one more shot before the capacitors burn out, so we need to get this right now and get back to a timeline that's not overrun by the walk sensors are detecting a mainframe that should have the data you need. The Lassad will remain to protect the credit ship while you and Commander Jarok beam down to gather information. Okay, I don't have the EMH on this guy on this tune yet. Probably need that one. Okay. With any luck, the board will have what we need. Maybe. Our focus is on restoration. There is a computer node in this area of the Unimatrix that should have what we need. Find the node and download all the data you can from the point where we the made whole our planet. All that our should people. help us find out how to fix this. They're bored. I'm going to join you. I know this place. Or at least I knew this place. Before we lost the homeworld, it was a tall share complex. Most of the secrets. Okay, I think we should actually just kill these guys. For that, we, however, should also uh, assign a few abilities here. Something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Too bad I. Don't have frosted boots yet. We're so wrong. Well, that, that's what happens if you tamper with the timeline based on a holodeck simulation. I mean, <laughs> I'm not surprised at least. Cover me. Okay. I'll override the door controls.
always make sure that you're aiming when you're shooting round combat. Uh, stamp key is X. Makes your character go a little slower, but the 33% range damage is definitely worth it. Uh, crouching increases your dodge chance for range attacks, but makes you more susceptible to melee damage. So crouching is only a thing if they aren't slapping you with swords. Right. And we'll just kill the Borg. Luckily, at this level, I don't know if they would actually adapt if we did this on level 50 or 60. Uh, but as my level 10 or 22 doesn't there. have any of that. It's not a problem yet. Locked. We'll have to circumvent their security measures. Wait, incoming Borg. Uh, also, flanking is always a good thing. Okay. Killing all these guys with the split beam. Come on, guys, just die, will you? I'm not looking, I'm not looking, spoiler alert, yeah, that's true, can't really not spoil it during playing it. I thought that was the worst thing that could happen to us. What order, should I set my keybind out with chemo side 1, 2, fire at will 1, 2, and a handful of attack patterns? Um. I personally use Chemocide with, like you can use it with all the attack pattern and pad wills. It, it really doesn't matter, like, uh, put Omega, Chemo 2, and Fight Will 2 together, and then the other three together. I'd use the attack pattern first, Chemocide next, and then Fight Will, I guess. can also swap around the Chemocide and the Fight Will the change will be rather small. This was Romulan technology once, but it's been completely assimilated. Okay. Akiv? You will become one with the Borg. Resistance is futile. <laughs> this is amazing. We always knew that Akiv was Really strange, right? I mean, this just makes sense with him. <laughs> okay. Should I use on my Federation to the patrol escort or the science pilot escort? Patrol Escort has a little more potential, but it's more difficult. Um, and the Science Pilot will definitely be on average better once the uh, MSC consoles are fixed. Input Query, Open Temporal Records. Um, okay. Break down records by year and provide a summary of events for Romulus system only. Let's put it results with oldest entries first. Okay. Downloading the data. The invasion of Romulan space occurred about 20 years ago. Something happened in the Delta Quadrant. The Borg assimilated something that greatly improved their technology. They adapted, evolved, and my people, they didn't have a chance. Maybe it's our fate to lose Romulus. All we can do is now is try to restore the previous timeline. Maybe this will help. The ship could just delete itself again. Just like in the episode, right? Okay, we have the thing downloaded. Oops. Okay. I'm going we did to that. The controls ahead of us will okay. unlock the bulkheads. All right. Tier six Avenger. Not a big fan of the thing. I mean, it, it's a decent enough ship, but two science consoles 
don't really cut it anymore. Okay. Do we need to kill them? I think we do. No, oh, they drain our shields. <laughs> that is sort of a problem if you like don't have any abilities. No, we died. <laughs> Compressing thing now. Oh, apparently, we are. Communications array is ready. Okay, cool. They just Secure keep spawning. And they do a little less damage. The numbers now. If we target the Borg transwarp network, the Borg may never be able to reach Romulus. It is a great risk. The Borg have a great deal of influence on the timeline. There is no time to run simulations. Do we have a choice? We do not. Okay. Targeting the transwarp network. Fire the weapon now. Geo, calm down. Not too much trolling. People might not know. What are you talking about? The Borg are gone, but so is Romulus. All right, Romulus back to the original the state. Force. Temporal shielding is failing. What happened? The Borg did too much damage to the generator. If we lose the temporal shielding, we'll all reintegrate with the timeline. Has anything else changed? Checking. No. The Tutarians. They're gone. What? How? I see the problem. Twenty years ago, your people tried to replicate the work of the Solane to protect themselves from the Borg. In this timeline, they failed. Temporal shield is at 8%. No, I need to restabilize the shield. I'm downloading my personal files into the shielded core. You'll have all my research notes and everything we've recorded from this mission. You're giving up? When the shield fails, if the Tutarians were lost in the past, then you'll be lost too. Temporal shield is losing integrity. Is there anything we could do? No, we all knew the risks. I love. All right. I think we are back where we were, right? Beginning. Okay. Now we're going to another room. Good thing is the mission never really happened, so we didn't really violate like all time wine rules. And we didn't even have a 29th century ship attack us trying to delete us from time. That is also a little odd. <laughs> that would have been awesome if, the, if just one of the temporal science vessels came out of nowhere and destabilized us. Okay. We found a temporally shielded computer core and it shows two uses of the Krenum weapon. But as far as I know, the Iconians are still out there. We changed the timeline, but we didn't fix our most important problem. We haven't dug that far into the data yet and it will take some in-depth investigation to catalog all of the changes. Noi is going to lead the group taking care of that. I will say it is uh, odd to find personal logs I don't remember making. I imagine that would be strange. 
But from what we've already seen, it appears the reason the weapon was fired twice was because we had to try to correct a change we made. Technology like this seems so simple, but even the smallest change can make more trouble than it solves. We have to be more ca far more cautious than we've already been, I suppose. The next mistake might not be fixable. Time alteration might not be the answer. There are some problems that can't be solved with a weapon. But time travel... <clears throat> Look, whatever happens, it was good working with you. I hope we have the chance to do so in the future. Alright. So, now we've finish up with talking to these guys and we should be done, right? I was conducting another simulation and all of a sudden I got an emergency call telling me to stop everything. I will be looking at whatever data we managed to save to try and determine what went wrong. Maybe we can try again after we know more. I hope you find something. It has been good to have you here. But we will have to consider if time alteration is really the best course of action. <laughs> yeah, of all right. the records we have of time travel, few have as drastic a result as this. Perhaps removing elements from the time stream isn't the solution we need. Possibly. We put so much hope into using the Clenum technology to solve our problems. Perhaps I was caught up in the possibilities and blind to the potential for disaster. We tried and we failed. But this isn't the end. We'll keep looking at the simulations as well as any other option open to us. I have to have faith that we will find a way to defeat the Iconians. Okay, so, um, after the mission, we can do another ISA, uh, testing out the lag and how the changes really work. I mean, now we have a lot of people actually playing, so this could be a sort of stress test going on. Uh, if you want to come along, um, and guys, calm down and chat, really. Um, if you guys want to come along, just uh, hit me with an in-game message. Or uh, put your handle into the chat right now. Then we can uh, fill up if we still need some. Clearly, you made a mistake somewhere. I still feel this is the best technology available to us, but we will need minds sufficient to the task to operate. Still the positive guy. Alright, return to our ship, bound fly complete. Okay. Captain Norm tells me that the initial test of the Crinum weapon was less than promising. He says that he and his team have a great deal of data still to analyze. But I do not believe they will find much that will assist us. Removing elements from the time stream is reckless. And while our options are limited, we should not destroy ourselves in a fruitless effort to destroy the Iconians. It is time to consider all of our alternatives. Okay, so from these items we realistically don't need anything, uh, just because this is a little too an MK. However, it didn't change the uh, critical chance and severity in comparison to um, what it did at level 60. So it might not change at all even if you upgrade it. Uh, we have three people so far, so we have spot for one more if anyone wants to come along. Alright, so uh, going into a map where we can actually see the effect 0 to 2.5 percent With that, Let's slot this console to see if it tells us anything the two-piece bonus is 6.4 percent tetrion three-piece bonus is Two minutes recharge effects foam 10 max 10 kilometers sphere AOE tetrion damage mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. 2k radius so quite some AOE and that will probably work with um, Tatran consults and stuff so yeah w what are the other set items the Tatran energy weapon the core probably can't really make it happen possibly with the weapon um, 
how do we see the critical severity that it gives us though? Like at um, 31 energy, it gives us 3.2 possibly. If we increase our power to 100, it should go to around 10. Um, okay, cool, it actually does. It would be interesting to see it probably doesn't go over 100 just because at 103 it should be like 3% or something and already says that you only can get a maximum of 10 severity out of this so probably no matter what you do um, at 100 you're basically good and that is a level that can be reached on almost all ships by now especially Federation but even scimitars can do it so the console is actually not that bad with the uh, maximum shield capacity and stuff might be a realistic alternative for like solo runs and stuff where you need survivability thinking about the critical severity and crit age it's not quite is it i don't know it's pretty close to the tachyo possibly the tachyo gives you 1.24 uh, 25 or something and 12.5 Huh. It's it's actually a pretty decent console. If you have 100 um, auxiliary power, that is. Um, all right. So we'll jump onto the Romulan. How hard is it there? Off the scales. So as we said earlier, creating a private match. Okay. Now picking up everyone that acts up. We still need one more. It's not given me the name. Let's try this. Okay. And I think we found the last one. All right. Wait for pets and wait for go. Tactical and Intel Fleet 1. See if anyone wants to comment on his Tactical or Intel Fleets. Uh, make sure the combat lock is going. There's no one typing, checking if anyone is alright. <laughs> We have four readies. There's no TFIF left anymore. Do you have the powerful beam weapon to that ship? Um, I think he's talking about the new temporal thing, right? And I think it comes with a anti-proton lance of some sorts. So yeah, I, I think it has some powerful beam. The problem is, I mean, on that chip it's really an addition because it's anti proton, as far as I know. Um, but like with the phaser, the spinal lance and stuff, it's not that amazing. These things are more for the fun of it looking good, but yeah. Okay, we have someone stuck in the map movement. Might either not be tapped in or disconnected. Or just loading really slow. So we are launching our pets. Waiting until everyone is ready. Alright. 
right. I'm currently uh, flying my scimitar. I switched back from the Tolvar. Um, quite upgraded these days. And there we go. The reason why I usually have stuff pretty much on very low audio settings. Um, duty officers put one of each in a uh, attack pattern guy. Space warfare not really necessary, like there are other choices. But um, since I have the Dyson shield and currently run reciprocity, which you probably don't really should do, but you know, it's all the fun. Um, it, it works pretty well this way. Okay, so we need one more ready. Uh, Going in five, four, three, two, one, and here we go. Make it not rather bad, please. Okay, this is looking pretty good in comparison. I I um, I don't know. Like since two patches, I have some gr uh, like FPS drops. I used to have after one patch really good FPS, and then. Uh, it suddenly changed again. I don't know really where that's coming from. These things won't become interactable. Okay. So we're not flying around too much, trying to get in front of the uh, transformer to get into the flank and arc. Killing the generator and the back using emergency power to keep us cycled. Uh, waiting for the next fight will to come up. Moving back a little so we actually get all the spheres into our chasm to put up the plasma fire. Uh, I should have used my battery a little earlier, just using it now. Uh, using the warp shadows because otherwise we might actually die on this. Go on fighting attack Nomica for the uh, hull. Get some heals from those hazard emitters, taking out the sphere over there. Alright. Cloaking up to get another cloak ambush. Uh, Fireball, uncloaking, Roman reputation. Lucara thing, destabilizing resonance beam, super high uh, FPS drops. Awesome. Okay, killing all those, cloaking up again with evasive maneuvers, going over to the other side, getting tag teamed for I don't know why exactly, but getting tag teamed. Another uh, hazard emitter, tractor beam from the top, tag teaming to clear the assimilation thing. We might actually die on this uh, using the defensive stuff. I'm out of range to the small thing in the back come on and we are indeed dead but that's okay not nothing too much happened there and like the FPS is really making this sort of difficult I don't know how it's looking for you guys I guess it's about the same as it is for me it's just my new computer and we might actually lose the optional. No, we get a gravity well. Very nice. Okay. Killing the thing, hopefully, within time. Come on, die. Okay. Now killing the, these other guys. Yeah, like, I don't know if something is wrong with my computer or not. But realistically, I, I, it shouldn't lag that much on FPS. I like this far, it's really FPS. Okay. And attack for an alpha. Trying to shoot the weapons. But really, this is sort of tough. Okay, waiting a little for the next fight will to cycle the weapons over, getting into the uh, flank and arc of the cube, which will be behind it, getting a second GDF, and walk shadows, using the uh, reactive armor catalyst, which puts this super uh, awesome green box around your ship. I don't know if this is actually in, working as intended or just a missing effect or something, but the uh, reactive armor catalyst just puts out this green box. Okay, fire my mark. 
Ski, I think his resistance is. And slapping him. All right. So that is that for ISA. The lag itself was actually okay. I, I need to rerun this at some point without like streaming because uh, that is quite some CPU drain. Um, but putting the result into team chat, actually a pretty good run, especially for J uh, 25K uh, on a tier one Connie. Where is he over there? The USS Shatner, really beautiful. Um, where is he there? Yay, 25k. <laughs> that is amazing. Okay, so let's look at the parse. Um, we did 84.5k out of uh, 49 base, so in a really well debuffed run. We would expect this to be around 100k, uh, but obviously dying doesn't really help. Um, the ratio between fire at will and non-fire at will uh, is about 4 to 1, which is pretty good. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, it, it's a decent run. We had a little too long on the clock, like 4 minutes. It's just taking a little too long, but generally was pretty okay. So. Uh, Thanks everyone. And that's about how I say goes. Okay, cool. Hey guys, I'm flying a Kumari Escort. I fly with phaser cannons. Is that the right choice? Cause the Kumari cannon makes phaser damage. Um, yes. Like realistically, the difference between um, different weapon types is really small. However, like you have to uh, give up so much to get the wing cannon really working. But for the fun of it, you, you can do it. Nothing really holds you back. You just need to make sure that um, the other stuff is in place, basically. Like if you use um, four uh, in a, uh, phaser dual beam banks and the kinetic cutting beam and an omnidirectional fire at will, you know, your result will be totally fine. Um, you can always go with phasers, like on my Federation 2 and I have phasers just because of the um, Nadian bomb console, which is really awesome. The um, Galaxy Axis um, phaser spinal lands. So, you know, just go with that and your result will be almost indistinguishable from another. So it, it comes down to RNG at some point. Uh, just making sure you have the right stuff and if you play decently like don't use all in one keybinds with um, uh, distributing shields and stuff if you don't do the major screw ups basically then you're totally fine all right cool so i think that will be it for me for tonight so thanks everyone for tuning in if you do have any questions let me know I hopefully will be streaming tomorrow, nothing really interesting, I just want to level up my Delta Tune and I want to do it on stream. So if you feel like watching that, uh, I'll definitely be answering, answering questions and stuff. So um, yeah, that offer stands. And for tonight I'm done, unless you guys have anything else to talk about. Um, can I has free ECs? Thanks. Um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I might give away um, a ship at some point though. We, we will not only have the um, bridge officer in about a week, we will also have a ship giveaway. Can't really tell you guys which ship yet, but um, look forward to that. Alright, so thanks everyone for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time.